What is going on everybody? So today I wanted to share a tank with you guys that we've been servicing for about three years now. Now when we first got this aquarium, it was like completely covered in pulsing zinnia. And I mean from like, there wasn't one square inch of this tank that wasn't covered with pulsing zinnia. Now we did a treatment to get rid of all the pulsing zinnia, which I'll share with you guys in another video. And now the problem we're having is there's only so much room left for new coral. So I needed your guys' help to kind of give me suggestions of what we should put to kind of just be like the cherry on top of the sundae. We only have a few spots, so we got to be very selective. I want them, I want any new corals that I want any new corals that we put in this tank to really stand out. But before we pack up and head there, I just got to the fish shop and I got to do some feeding first. And I'll take it as an opportunity to show you all the new fish that we got and all the cool stuff that we have in. So let's start the feed.
All right, now that the fish are all fed and happy, I'm gonna pack up the truck and I'll see you at the tank. So here is the tank and I am so proud of this aquarium. It's come so far and um, uh, so first off, don't worry about that toadstool. The polyps were out. I just was cleaning the glass so the polyps went in, but that's doing phenomenal. Cabbage coral looks amazing. All these corals have just gotten so much better color. This frog spawn used to be, or hammer coral used to be so pale, it's a darker green now. Um, this chromos is a trip. He like follows me around the whole aquarium. I've never seen a chromos act like that before. Um, so this leather coral right here, I mean, this thing was down to like a nub and it's completely like, it's grown into this huge colony and it's one of the customer's favorite corals. Um, torch coral, we just added that fairly recent. That looks amazing. Now guys, uh, it does look a little bit stagnant here. Like there's not a lot of flow. That's simply because I took the, I turned the flow off um, so we can get a better look in, inside the tank. Um, I'm really proud of how clean the sand is. It's like bright white. Uh, the hammer coral looks great, but we're going to have to move that Kenya tree next to it to give it a little bit more room. I don't want that Kenya tree stinging it or causing any problems. There's also some Kenya tree right here in the middle that we're going to have to frag out of here to have more room for other things uh, to be able to grow in, the, in this tank. Let those zoas really take over that rock. Also, we have this uh, beautiful monopora with this nice red color to it. Uh, we constantly have to go in here and frag this uh, coral because it just grows so quickly and we don't want it to shade these nice corals down here. Again, we have to frag up that Kenya tree here on the side because we want those mushrooms to grow and we want to have more room for that bubble coral, which actually stung me today. That thing is no joke. Um, and there's, yeah, like there's tons of uh, Kenya tree. We like, we have to take our, that whole area out um, and then we can have room for some more corals. Uh, have some more of these really pretty mushrooms grow there instead. It's like, look at this bright blue. Like, that's insane. These gold mushrooms, like, they're unbelievable. Like, they're one of my favorite corals. And this started off with one, and they're growing really well. They're big. Uh, I really don't see those in people's tanks anymore. I think I'm going to keep this Kenya tree right here because it is kind of creating a barrier. It's not letting that star polyp kind of take over um, too much and the purple uh, monopora so that that Kenya tree is kind of acting like a buffer um, and keeping these corals in check. There's the other toadstool like the one we saw before. You can see the polyps are out. Now his polyps are a little bit more in because he's right by the flow. They're not as long but that uh, is doing amazing as well and then we got a bunch of mohawk zoanthids just growing up on the wall on the return. I mean this tank is just chock full of uh, absolute just beast corals. And then to the other side of the tank, because this is a peninsula style tank, we have uh, this toadstool where you can see those little pieces are falling off. And those pieces will fall off, fall off and become other toadstool. Uh, that's basically how it reproduces. You can see there's one right there that uh, fell off and grew. And down here you have a clam. I mean, look at this beauty. Wow. But again, Kenya trees growing on the side of it. We want to take that Kenya tree off because we don't want it bothering the clam. But that clam has been here for a long time. I think it's an absolute monster. I love it. We have a ton of room here um, on the substrate where we have this mushroom. We have a rock flower anemone that's kind of uh, hidden there. But I like. I really like to see those mushrooms kind of grow and take over. Uh, we have Micromusa right there that was buried, but it's coming back. Probably try frag up some more Kenny tree again. Twenty four carat lepto, which. Guys, like this is one of the best corals you can have in your tank. Could you imagine? I mean, look what it's doing to this rock. You'll have a whole rock if this thing grows properly encrusting that will be a bright gold color. Like People sleep on these encrusting corals. Trumpet coral, Blastamuso, which was one of my corals from my tank. It started off with two heads and this thing is really growing really well. Um, I love seeing that because that's got sentimental value for me and more beautiful blue mushrooms like these aren't your regular doll blue mushrooms like these things are like bright bright blue so the mushrooms are spreading pretty well um and then if we go up here a bunch of zoas some eagle eyes dragon eyes all that then this trumpet coral actually grew so big that i had to frag it and that's where that colony comes from we have a nice arch here to kind of open it up because it is a peninsula style tank let the tank breathe a bit some more arches and stuff for fish to kind of go through now, I really do want to put more corals in this tank. You can see we don't have much real estate to deal with, but if we're clever enough and if we do smart placement, then we're going to be able to add more coral in here while keeping that uh, open look that the customer wants and that I think looks really good uh, in this aquarium. Um, so we got to do very smart placement. But all in all, like this tank has made me so proud. We work really, really hard on it. and. Everything is just growing and growing and growing. And 
just to watch this tank go from like what it was to what it is now it just lets me know like it makes me feel like i'm doing something uh and making progress so I got rid of all that Kenya tree we were talking about removing. It makes the tank look less cluttered and it allows the zoas to kind of claim some more of that rock. There is some pretty zoas in here that I like to see more of. I also move this toadstool, toadstool coral over a bit so it's not pressed up, a, up against glass, but there's still more real estate over there for corals. I cleared out the Kenya tree over here by the bubble tip anemone and there's plenty of little spots. Oh, and by the hammer coral, plenty of spots for more coral for sure. But uh, yeah, man, this tank is just looking great and I couldn't be happier with the way it's coming along. All right, guys, let me know what you think of that tank. Let me know what corals you think would really make it special and put it over the top. I'm gonna head to the next job. Have a good one.